people came out, uh, announced themselves to be undocumented, uh, whereas uh, the previous practice, of course, had been to hide one's uh, status uh, because it might mean the difference between um, getting uh, access to this aspect of the educational system or that. And so many young people came out and identified themselves as undocumented immigrants. Uh, in some places, in Texas, for example, there was a, a, a very protracted hunger strike in the tradition of um, Cesar Chavez. Uh, uh, the students uh, fasted for, uh, and of course, in the tradition of Gandhi. Uh, this, and if, if we had time, we could also talk about the extent to which uh, uh, Cesar Chavez, you know, not only Martin Luther King, but Cesar Chavez was influenced uh, by Gandhian um, strategies of struggle. Um, now, in Arizona, uh, the recent legislation that was passed, anti-immigrant legislation, it's horrendous, it's racist, it enables the worst kind of harassment of people who appear to be potentially undocumented. Because this legislation allows the police to um, stop and arrest, literally arrest undocumented immigrants. But how are they going to determine the immigration status uh, simply by looking at someone? And so it means that Latinos are especially subject to this uh, racial harassment. Uh, and I should say um, that this was, uh, that this legislation, this dangerous legislation was a, a major setback in the immigrant rights movement. And I'll say parenthetically that the largest private prison corporation. I've been talking about prisons a lot since I've been here because I gave a talk yesterday on prison abolition and the challenges of feminism. And I you know, talked about the privatization of prisons. The largest private prison corporation in the world, which is called Corrections Corporation of America, which incidentally was modeled along the lines of uh, one of the first private um, healthcare corporations, hospitals corporation of America. Uh, I mean, this is what happened during that period of the emergence of and consolidation of global capital uh, and the dismantling of the welfare state. Uh, uh, but CCA was responsible for helping to draft the, le the anti-immigrant legislation in, in Arizona. And they will benefit from it because they also run immigrant detention facilities. And so those who are involved in the campaign against the prison industrial complex have to take up this issue of the uh, repression of immigrants and, and the use of this uh, prison industrial complex against, uh, against immigrants. Now, I see I'm kind of running out of time. Uh, and I, I just want to move very briefly or as quickly as possible, through the last uh, couple of points that I want to make in my talk. Uh, um, I'd like to simply gesture toward other civil rights issues. Uh, uh, and perhaps I'll, perhaps, perhaps I'll simply gesture towards the most, one of the, or two of the most controversial issues. So, uh, and, and, the one is the, that of marriage within lesbian and gay uh, communities. Uh, and the other is uh, the, the rights of gays and lesbians to join the military. Now, here's an interesting situation, especially for those of us who might have uh, feminist critiques of the institution of marriage. So what does it mean to support the right to marriage, and especially those of us who are opposed to the military and don't want 
to do anything that will further strengthen the military. But those are civil rights. And I think we have to take the position that if anyone has the right to marry, then everyone should. But that doesn't mean that in the process of supporting that right, we don't also uh, propose a critique of an institution that is bourgeois, uh, that is totally patriarchal, uh, and that is heterosexist. And let me say that uh, this is what feminism has taught us, that we can engage in the quest for social justice uh, without having to assume that when we encounter such contradictions, we need to choose one position or the other. We, we've learned how to inhabit the contradictions uh, so that uh, we can both support the civil rights uh, of the person who wants to marry and then say, well, by the way, <laughs> do you really know what you're getting yourself into? <laughs> and we also, uh, we also support the rights of um, LGBT communities to participate in the military. Uh, uh, but we say, at the same time, we have to engage in an intense critique of the military. And as a matter of fact, we ought, instead of, instead of um, or as we, um, I'm talking about uh, uh, holding the tension between the two positions, you know, as we make these demands for uh, assimilation into this institution, we need to talk about dismantling the institution as well. And so, finally, if we are to fashion ourselves into agents of change in this contemporary era, it's really important to be able to make some sense of the world. Uh, we have to acknowledge uh, the connections uh, that, that link Israeli apartheid to the anti-immigrant uh, 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 struggle in the U.S. Uh, we have to, and I, I'm just, just going to name some movements that need to be uh, more clearly connected. Uh, the campaign against racism, the continued campaign against racism, and the struggle for climate justice. So racial justice, uh, uh, um, climate justice, uh, environmental justice, uh, and in this, we have to resist the temptation to think of ourselves first and foremost as individuals. We have to build, I think, ever larger circles of human solidarities. The struggle for democracy in North Africa and the Middle East uh, um, is, is extremely important. But we, especially we in the U US, have a responsibility to contest the militarism of the US government, which today expresses itself in three wars. There's the continuing war in Iraq, there's the war in Afghanistan, and now there's the war in Libya, plus their support for the Israeli war on the Palestinians. So they're really four theaters of war. How can we strengthen links with struggles here in India and in other parts of the world. And then I would go on to say that in conceptualizing these circles of solidarity, we have to include non-humans as well, um, animals, plants, the earth. Uh, uh, our notions of what it means to be free will have to move beyond individual freedom and take up collective freedom, community freedom, in the largest posit possible uh, sense. And even then, and this is something that some people find frustrating because they want, they want to know the meaning of freedom.